Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is another live edition of the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of geek news, product views, and answers that you can use, like an answer to the question, why do we keep slipping further and further away from 1,000? I don't think our community is getting smaller, our community of gnomies. Uh, I just think that, I, 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 I don't know. I really, I don't know what I think. Uh, I know that some pledges have not uh, cleared, and so we're just keeping things as clean as possible. Hopefully... You know, within a day's time or so, whenever Diana gives birth, the baby Perillo will be at 1,000. Maybe that's what's going to take. A baby will get us to 1,000. Uh, either way, I'm very happy to see that we have 939 patrons supporting what it is that I'm doing for you every day. Uh, and uh, that's really uh, it's, it's really what makes it possible for me to do these live shows and uh, all the various videos that I might do uh, on a regular basis, including, well, not just videos. Uh, we posted a new deal on deals.lockernome.com. Uh, it's, it's in relation to a DSLR. It's free. Not a free DSLR, but I believe it's a, a course that you might be able to take so you can learn how to better use a DSLR that you might have purchased. A, a, a camera that uh, is, you know, really um, you know, better than the average camera. I mean, how do you explain a DSLR to somebody? Well, if you know what a DSLR is, I wouldn't need to explain it to you. I, myself, do not have a DSLR. I don't use anything fancy to get my videos done. This is just a regular old HD camera connected by way of Firewire to a computer, and that's, I just, it's easy. It's simple. It's clean. Uh, but I did want to let you know there are a few deals you may want to be taking advantage of right now on deals.lockernome.com, as well as every day. Uh, yesterday, I did not get a chance to uh, share a lot of the news that uh, came across my radar, uh, so I've stacked most of it for today, including our video on the Swash. We posted our review in the other YouTube channel. It's a new household gadget to keep things fresh, and if you're a stinky geek, or you know a stinky geek or a stinky nerd, uh, you may want to let them know about the Swash. It'll, it'll save everybody some uh, pain in the nose, that, you know, your nostrils sting when someone wears clothes and then they don't wash them as regularly, it keeps clothes fresh. Love the swash. Uh, it's it's not exactly a replacement for anything, uh, but it's uh, it's found its way in between uh, wash cycles and drying cycles uh, to keep things nice and fresh. When I don't necessarily have a new t-shirt on like I do today, this is an old shirt. I like old shirts, although I don't like t-shirts that where the neck just like see like the neck. If I had a big, I don't like big neck t-shirts. This I don't enjoy this. Like big neck t-shirts, like the t-shirts that hang like this. is why you don't usually see me with t-shirts with big necks. I like I like them with small necks. I don't want my neck to show. I feel Puritan when it comes to the t-shirt coverage thing there. Patron Earl Green sent me a link that I think makes a very cogent argument uh, in terms of how Android sits in the universe of uh, products. Microsoft, uh, you know, has had a difficult time in getting its products from point A to point B. And it's not to say that the products are horrible. I think they're great products. Windows Phone devices are fine. Uh, in fact, uh, Windows Phone can now, I believe you can get Spotify for free on Windows Phone. That's that's something that was just announced in the, in the past day, which may be uh, good for you if you're using a Windows Phone, although not many people are. Microsoft is now, more than anything, writing the uh, coattails of Android hardware uh, in an effort to really save Windows Phones. And that's not a bad idea. They're having some uh, issues with the manufacturers, device manufacturers, those who build hardware. Uh, they're having problems getting them to use Windows Phone as a platform because users just don't want it. We, 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 don't, we don't need Windows Phone. We, we needed it eons ago. And remember, I used, to use, well, I used to use Windows Mobile when it was called Windows Mobile and then Pocket PC, or the, they called it the Pocket PC OS for a number of years. They've called it various things. Microsoft's mobile strategy. Uh, you know, some people wonder, well, what's it going to take for Windows Phone to take off? And I really believe that Windows Phone has a possibility of working. However, and, and I realize this this may work, it may not work. I, you know, I've not you know done a deep dive on the economics behind the decision or a would-be decision. But to me, it would make sense to get the market to adopt Windows phones, to get those Windows phones into more people's hands. How are you going to do that? Well, they're not necessarily buying a lot of new PCs, but what if it was the case that for every Windows PC you bought, a new Windows PC, it came with a Windows phone? You know, maybe, uh, you know, you got a, or you got a gift certificate to exchange for a Windows phone, and then Microsoft basically subsidized the, the entire experience stem to stern. It would seem to me that would help 
people at least understand what these devices are, or at least get it into their hands where they could understand where or if they would want to be using a Windows phone over, say, their iOS device uh, or their Android device, which those two seem to be ruling the roost, not just in terms of market share, but certainly in terms of profit share, and there's definitely a value of, uh, of each one of them. So uh, market share, profit share, numbers are, you can't just look at one number. you got to look at a lot of numbers and then, and then take them in relation to what it is that you're trying to analyze. The problem is Windows Phone isn't making a dent anywhere. So to me, I'm thinking, well, people are still buying PCs somewhat, uh, maybe not at the same clip, clip as they were uh, years ago, but imagine having that as a compelling argument to go with a PC over, uh, say, a Mac, or, you know, going to an Apple store and buying a Mac or going online and buying a, a Mac. Knowing that you'd have to buy an iPhone or an iPad separately, that would be another value of sticking within the, the Microsoft ecosystem. You buy a Microsoft-driven PC running Windows, you would get a, a Microsoft-driven tablet for free or a Windows phone for free. Eh, I, I, it's a crazy idea. Uh, I'm not saying it's an amazing idea, but I can't imagine it being any worse than what Microsoft's facing now, and that's nobody's buying them. So w w what else could anybody come up with? Well, all people need to do is use it. Well, great. How are you going to get them to use it? Give it to them. Have it, have it as a writer, if you will. Give them a certificate so they can get one for free. So that way, uh, Microsoft foots the bill. And, I mean, they're paying right now out the nose because they don't control those pa platforms. And Microsoft, of course, is not the same type of player as Google, is not the same type of player as Apple, is the same type of player as Amazon. They're all playing in the same space, and that's why it's kind of difficult to compare one against the other. I'm just thinking in terms of a consumer, you know, when they've, they've got to make a choice of what they're going to do next or their next purchase, what's compelling or what's more compelling to them. And I think that would uh, potentially go a long way in terms of driving Windows Phone adoption, getting them in more hands. The hardware might be expensive, but what's more expensive? Losing that customer forever or, or possibly losing a, a small amount of money in the grand scheme of things uh, over a piece of hardware that's going to be outdated in a year's time. And uh, it seems to me that I think that the best bet for Microsoft is not just you know, uh, having Windows Phone be able to be installed on uh, hardware that was uh, spec'd out for Android, that was built for Android or with Android in mind. It's a smart way of going, certainly, but you got to get it con to consumers. And the best way to do that, I'm telling you, is it free. In fact, I argued the same thing uh, for uh, Zune when they released the Zune in the face of uh, the iPod eons ago. Obviously, Microsoft doesn't listen to me, and that's I'm fine with that. I don't care. Um, I'm still going to put my thought out there. I said, well, give the hardware away. Like, you're, you're going to make the money up in, in licensing or, you know, in selling a subscription service to music. At that point, I think Microsoft was, I want to say MTV had Urge, and I want to say that was, that was a part of Microsoft's plays for sure strategy, and then Urge became... Rhapsody. Rhapsody's still around, kind of. Still doing things, but of course Spotify rules the roost. And I thought, well, to get people to use your service, you gotta give them the hardware. Just give them the hardware. You know, that's that's the biggest hurdle, and the hardware is nothing compared to that software. Once you're in that software, once you're in the ecosystem, you don't want to leap out. But once you've leapt out, I mean, the chances of you going back in are between slim and none. That's why, you know, hearing people talk about switching from one point to another, I'm like, yeah, it's, but it's not as easy anymore to say, well, I'm switching from whatever to whatever because there's so many things to keep in mind. And I think that uh, Microsoft, if there was a time to uh, make it brain-dead simple, easy for people to jump into Windows Phone before they lose the market entirely, uh, I, I think giving it away is about the most sound strategy I, I've heard or seen. I don't know if they could pull it off, but uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I think it's... It, I, I don't want to see Windows Phone die. I don't. Uh, I think it's uh, it's 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 always been a decent play at mobile. I think it was it came along unfortunately ten years too late. Um, it, but it, to me, it's 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 not just a matter of having an alternative. It's 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 knowing that Microsoft's still in the game, and I think that's that's something that's valuable to most consumers, if only for a competition or the idea of competition being there. Even if you don't like Windows Phone or Windows in general, you just you still need it there, even if you don't uh, love it, even if you don't support it, even if you don't use it. Uh, competition is extremely important, and I'd hate to see us fall into a trap where we kind of are today with the world of iOS and Android, and the two are not complete opposites. I think for most users, you'd be able to get the same amount done on both platforms. I mean, th you get tripped up on the nuances and, of course, completely different ecosystems and completely different market strategies from the companies that own the platforms. Uh, or control the platforms in Google's case. The uh, uh, 
the idea, though, that uh, Microsoft is going to slip further and further away into irrelevance is something Microsoft has to seriously consider, and they got to get their stuff out in front of more people. It's not just software on iOS. It's not just software on Android. they got to get their, their platform there. How are you going to do it? I, maybe someone else has got a better idea. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying it's the, the end-all, be-all answer for that, uh, what might ail Microsoft, but it seems to me that if they're piggybacking on uh, Android hardware, they just go a step further. Subsidize the hardware. Get more people using it. Give it away. Uh, so, those are my thoughts on Windows Phone in relation to that story. Um, and uh, there are a couple of other things that, that would probably underscore it uh, as well. Um, in fact, I'll just skip to it now. It, it just kind of in passing. Huawei basically lost money with Windows Phone for the past two years, has no plans for adopting ties, and they're going Android. Uh, even though they're not happy about that, that's where they're going. So they lost money for two years. Well, again, you, you're just... You're tilting at windmills to think, you know, a Windows phone could survive in an ecosystem where the, the hardware manufacturers, the people who you rely on to get your software to run, are, are going to be around for the long haul. Microsoft needs to make its own hardware, cut some deals, and just basically give it away. I, I, I hate to say it, but... They, or, or don't. Or don't. I don't care. I'm not Microsoft. I'm not Satya Nadella. I don't have to control that ship. But uh, here's the thing. If they give it away and still nobody wants it, that's 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 an even bigger problem. Uh, I, I wouldn't know how to fry that, but eh, just some thoughts. Uh, so something I did want to announce today, and now that I've talked about Microsoft for a bit and placated probably ninety percent of the audience, uh, Hyperlapse was just released from the team that brought you Instagram. An engineer's uh, been with Instagram for quite some time after an acquisition, and he was the person who uh, worked on a few features in relation to video and stabilization within Instagram. And he came up with, uh, years ago he was inspired by a movie he saw, and he came up with a way of basically, not I don't want to say emulating, but uh, taking the features of uh, normally a camera rig that would cost you know five figures and distilling it down into an app. And Hyperlapse is now available for iOS, will be available for Android, no word on Windows Phone, um, but Hyperlapse is available for free right now. Now what's neat about Hyperlapse is that even if you don't want to use a hyperlapse for what it is, you can record video outright, and I think it does a better job at stabilizing HD video than the default iOS camera does, just in my basic experiments. And so it, it may be a good default camera app for you. What hyperlapse does is it basically... Um, it, I, <laughs> Think of it like time-lapse, but moving time-lapse. Like with a time-lapse photography, you keep the camera in a stationary position and just you, you, you're shooting images. With hyperlapse, you can be aboard like a moving train and you could be just holding the camera still and it records a, a series, uh, like the video, uh, as, as it normally would, stabilizes it. But what you can do is you can make it so that it skips so many frames and create artistic scenes that you could uh, put a music bed underneath. So if you want to record a sunrise but you didn't want to have it be like a, a, a traditional time lapse, if you're driving and you wanted to shoot out the window, uh, it just makes for a more, uh, I guess, stylized uh, version of a video. It's worth trying. Uh, easier to do than it is to uh, really explain. But it, think of it like time lapse for video but not like time-lapse like you've uh, considered before. If nothing, like I said, it would make a better default camera if only for the video stabilization features that they built in using the uh, uh, gyroscope, actually. They rely on the gyroscope to steady uh, the video, and it works out uh, exceedingly well. Uh, some people are sending me, nah, we've got a baby on the way. Not here yet. That's Diana's not here right now, but we did receive, this is a little geeky thing. Love this. I love anything with a Star Wars tag on it. Mini Trooper. That's right, we're getting boy or girl we are going to have a mini trooper. This came courtesy of Tom, oh, I'm sorry, not Tom, Dan McLaughlin from Raleigh, North Carolina. He watches the uh, North Carolina. I said Carolina, like I'm in the South. Carolina. My dad's here. Uh, I wasn't making fun. It's just I think in North Carolina. I just go back to the time that I was in North Carolina. There we go. North Carolina. Ki Carolina. Is that more Midwestern there? Uh, Chris, get your sleep now while you still can. I watch your dog dogs. I watch your vlogs daily and wish you all nothing but the best. Uh, and then, I, why, why do I want to call him Tom? Dan also sent these Star Wars washcloths. Anakin, Yoda, Obi-Wan. So we're, we're going to be Star Wars out with this baby. And uh, someone sent me, thank you, Brian Roberts, sent me a, a little video from the 80s. Underoos, Star Wars underoos. These were, uh, if you don't know what underoos are, number one, you're too young. 
Uh, number two, just Google it or, you know, go to my Twitter feed. I, I tweeted it earlier. It had both boys and girls wearing Star Wars underoos. So Star Wars is for boys or girls. I think it goes, either, you know, it doesn't matter. You boy, girl, man, woman, male, female. Star Wars is for all Earthlings, at least according to this classic underoos commercial, which I'm not wearing. I mention this because Gen C, that's the handle she goes by, linked me off to lullaby renditions of classic NES games. Uh, kind of neat. I, I'm a big 8-bit fan, even though these are not 8-bit songs. I'm, I'm actually thinking about some 8-bit, uh, trying to find some 8-bit lullabies uh, for the child, uh, to, to lull a child to sleep, and uh, having 8-bit music, you know, some of the first musical experiences. I think music is going to be a, a good part of the child's life. Music is a great uh, vehicle for uh, learning, discovering, exploring, uh, and, uh, you know, music touches us at every point in our life and so i don't think there's any music that i would not necessarily play maybe for a baby i might not go the heavy metal route now i'm not going to rule it out you know i was a fan of anthrax and and, and megadeth back in the day so uh, just saying maybe 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 i'll ease the child in with some kiss you know some not exactly heavy metal but you know some heavy hard rock you know and classic rock that's it music's music whether you're Weird Al at the VMAs, which, yes, I've seen. Some people tweeted me last night, Weird Al did the VMAs, which was interesting. Uh, Tyler Oakley also did the VMAs last night, and we were kind of, oh, we knew him. We we got our picture with Tyler. We had him up at the uh, Vlogger Fair, uh, and then he was doing the VMAs. Um, some people didn't like Weird Al's performance. It, it, I, it's To me, it felt like he was constrained. I've seen Al perform live, and what he did on stage was nothing compared to his live show. I think he was, I think I felt he was kind of limited. He, he I think he was that was partial Al. It was Al, nonetheless. Glad to see him on stage, but I, I can't help but feel he was uh, restricted somewhat uh, creatively because it just didn't seem like he had a chance to sh shine and show his true Yankovicishness. So if you know of any 8-bit lullabies songs, 8-bit songs for the child, let me know. My email address, chris at perillo.com. Microsoft researchers, see I'm not done talking about Microsoft. This is not a slag, by the way. Let me turn around, make sure I give all these patrons the credit they deserve. Uh, Microsoft researchers have designed an incredible, this is according to the article, incredible lag-free cloud gaming system that predicts what you'll do next. Now, this is interesting because, uh, is it right? Is it wrong? Who knows? I mean, with gaming, every second counts. This has uh, been an issue, especially with cloud gaming environments, where if you have any amount of lag, that, that could spell all the difference uh, between a good game and a bad game. So the fact that Microsoft researchers, MSR, has been doing amazing work for a number of years. Microsoft research is, to me, if Microsoft had any hope, it's all in MSR. MSR is doing some fantastic stuff and, and has, uh, has been doing so for quite some time. So they've got a lag-free gaming system that could predict. So this is nice to know because Microsoft would likely bake in that technology uh, within the Xbox uh, series of gaming platforms, which makes sense. I mean, cloud gaming is not just... Yeah, right now we're, 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 what I'm saying is it's not just, uh, it's not theoretical, it's absolute, it, it exists, but there are problems, right? And certainly in relation to lag, big problems. So if Microsoft can figure out, if they can crack that nut and make it a seamless gaming experience when you're playing these games by way of the cloud, I, I think that they've got a better opportunity of leapfrogging and doing better than Sony. Sony has not always had, its it, its strong point has not ever been in its networking or its online gaming, uh, certainly that component of the PlayStation uh, galaxy of, of stuff. Oops, sorry, did not mean to interrupt. Uh, so I think Microsoft would be very wise uh, to, to you know push that into beta sooner rather than later and get it into the hands of users to start playing with cloud gaming now because the longer they wait, uh, you know, the, 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 the more mind share, not just market share, mind share they're going to lose. And trust me, I think mind share is as strong a factor in terms of adoption as, as market share. Market share is kind of like, this is the way I look at it. Mind share is something where you talk to your friends about what gaming platform they're using and you might actually care. Market share is one of those things where you just don't care. Do you care what your friends use? Well, it's possible, but does that influence the, th the decisions you make? Do you care what smartphone your, your friends use? Do you care? Me? No. I do not care what smartphone platform my friends use. I, I just don't care. I might care more about a gaming platform because so many of those, uh, those games are tied into the, uh, the ecosystems and the platforms itself. So it, it, it would make sense that they would not just be dealing with market share, but specifically mind share in terms of... Uh, you know, 
pushing uh, pushing along into uh, some of these uh, uh, cloud gaming experiences sooner rather than later. But they're doing it now. Uh, you should take a look, and uh, you might be interested. Even if it's not something for you, this is on the horizon, uh, and I think they're just uh, the industry's just kind of experimenting with it at this point in time. Uh, the Star Wars collector community, of which I think I'm a part of, although I'm not hardcore like uh, some people are. There are some fantastic resources out there. Uh, DorksideToys.com has uh, sent me a variety of figures, and I appreciate that when it, when it happens. Um, I saw an article shared, I think it was through Yakface.com, uh, talking about how a lot of people like myself, Star Wars collectors, are kind of feeling, not disillusioned, but we're very disappointed with way, the way Hasbro is producing toys. And this, I know, it sounds uh, horrific, but imagine if you, you were really fascinated with, okay, Android, just for uh, argument's sake, and everybody who was producing Android or licensed to produce Android was just producing junk. Well, this you may feel it's the case now. It's the same way with Star Wars toys. Uh, apparently, Hasbro just doesn't seem to be doing well in the collector's eyes. They're, they're really kind of uh, making some different steps, and maybe kids are going to not mind as much as collectors do, but uh, collectors are kind of feeling like we're getting the cold shoulder right now from uh, from Hasbro. Uh, I think they could do a fantastically better job. I've seen a lot of uh, issues that just shouldn't exist. Uh, really bad paint jobs I've seen in stores. I was ready to buy a Biker Scout, the six-inch figure, and it, the paint job was just horrific. The sculpt was great. The articulations, you know, numbered, you know, in, I think it was a, a 15 or more. Uh, the uh, uh, but there are so many problems that plague these figures, and apparently in an upcoming uh, Black Series line, a 3.75 inch figure, um, the the Darth Vader head pops off because it was just a poor uh, design job. So it's like, really? So uh, Hasbro's making some missteps in relation to its toys. So don't feel like you're only slighted when technology companies do not live up to your standards. If you think that's bad, imagine when you're a collector and, and the companies that are licensed to produce these products are not living up to uh, to your standards either. Um, so I've got a, I, I'm, I'm going to go to some. I've got two bits of news, two more bits of news from pat from patron Earl Green. Um, I'm going to go with this one first. Google as it suggested, should adopt the PC model to deal with Android update delays. I like the way Google approaches the marketplace, and it's doing it in a very Googly way. Uh, I like the fact that uh, Google has kind of reined in Android and exerted more control, which it should have done in the first place. Uh, that, I thought, was a, a, a massive shortcoming uh, to Android in, in its early years, and uh, Google has done its best to address most of those uh, shortcomings. But in relation to the way Google handles Android, it's completely different from the way Microsoft has handled Windows, if you think about it. If you buy a PC running Windows right now, you know you can get pretty much every Windows update that gets pushed down from Microsoft. You get all the updates. doesn't matter if you buy this PC, that PC, this PC, that PC, this Windows, that Windows. You get Windows. You know you've got that compatibility. That currently does not happen with Android as a platform, as, as the OS that's running, you know, on your, your tablet or your smartphone, assuming you're, you're running, or even, well, yeah, tablet and smartphone. I'm, I'm trying to think through where you would uh, find Android today. Uh, I, I started thinking through, like, through a, a Chrome OS or, or a Chromebook, and Chrome OS is probably closer to the model that they need to be adopting uh, in relation to Android in general. Uh, I love Chrome OS because, it's A, it's always up to date. They're always refreshing. It, I'm always getting the latest versions. Uh, I can install a beta a copy of the, the OS on, on, uh, on a Chromebook. It's easy to use, easy to manage. Um, the Chromebook is really, it's, 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 it. It, it never ceases to amaze me, and Google's continuously working on uh, Google Chrome and the Chrome OS to make it better. Android, however, just seems to have a few of these gaping holes in terms of that base platform. Like Windows, you know you're going to get the latest updates from Microsoft. Android, you don't know if you're going to get the latest updates from Google. And if Android was managed at a much more granular level, granular level, it wouldn't be an issue. Because, and, and they've kind of gone this way anyway. They've abstracted Google Play services, a lot of their default apps. You, you're no longer tied into that, that the base version of Android. And I think Google can go a step further and basically just componentize every part of Android such that 
any third party out there that wants to customize their own Android experience as a value add to their users on, on with using their hardware and their experience uh, without necessarily making people who want Android feel like they're left out in the cold because they don't have the latest version of Android or the latest version of all these apps. So Google is continuing to rein in Android, but I think it's just a matter of time before uh, Google continues. Or I think it's a matter of time before Google has to do that. And they're doing it, but they're just doing it slowly. I wish they would just kind of say, all right, here's the way it's going to be done from this step forward. Um, it's just going to be Something where you could buy an Android device, even if it's not branded an Android device outright, you just know you're going to have the latest version of Android or running on the latest version of Android and, and everything that uh, that would come uh, with it. And I think that's uh, that's the way they need to go, and I'm not the only person uh, who's necessarily uh, uh, taking that position. I don't think anybody would argue with that. I don't think anybody out there would say, oh, I want the old version of Android. Well, maybe there's one or two people. Uh, but uh, if they componentized it further than what they've been doing, uh, they're doing well, but I think they can go. Uh, they can go a lot further and make it work. Not work like Windows, as in function-wise. I mean, in terms of knowing that you're going to have the latest patches, the latest updates uh, for Windows, no matter which OEM you get through. So if if Google worked more like that, I think they'd be doing the the Android uh, ecosystem a great deal of uh, favors and probably save the OEMs a lot of consternation and frustration in the process. The other uh, article that uh, Earl Green, uh, patron Earl Green, I got he's a super nomi. You've got the nomies, that's everybody. And the super nomies, those are the patrons. Uh, he uh, sent another uh, uh, link to an article uh, that, that really was probably my biggest pain point when Windows RT was released, uh, suggesting that Microsoft's plan to rescue Windows RT is to basically get rid of the desktop. When I first saw Windows RT... I liked Metro or Modern or whatever the hell Microsoft's calling it this week. Um, that you know the tile-based experience, and I thought it, it was a great way of going. It didn't feel like Windows. I didn't need it to feel like Windows, but I really liked that usability on a tablet experience, a touchscreen experience. Uh, I didn't slag Windows RT for that. I slagged Windows RT for its performance problems, uh, and and really more than anything. I think what's hurt Windows RT the most has been the desktop. And the reason the desktop existed was not necessarily for backwards compatibility with classic Windows apps, but specifically to get Office to run, a classic version of Office to run on Windows RT. They had to use the desktop because a, a touch uh, optimized experience or a metro experience of Office wasn't ready. I think that hurt Windows RT more than anything. And if anything could save Windows RT, that's the thing. I, 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 I like... On a tablet experience, I like that. I like the the tiles. I like the way it works. I like the way it, it, it usability wise, it's not perfect, but I really like that experience. It's when I'm on a touchscreen Windows PC that I get pushed off to the desktop. That's where I get upset. So to me, Windows RT could have a chance to fly if everything existed uh, on that uh, that Metro or the modern experience. So I you know just. You've probably heard me say this before, and I know a lot of people ignore most of what I say, especially when they only hear one thing and they assume or they interpolate beyond that without getting any context. Some of you have been with me for years, so you know. Um, I think that's a great way, not just of salvaging Windows RT, but giving people a Windows Touch experience that they deserve. I think having one leg you know, in the past and one leg in the future is just it's it's the wrong way of going. Now... The video that I'm doing today, I, I do you know the five Q and A with you and me videos every day. Today's Q and A with you and me is specifically what do I want to see in Windows 9, and I'll have some thoughts on that shared in the separate video. That is just for the super nomies, just for the patrons. So if you're interested, you got to become a patron. Um, that is something that I think is going to give th that experience of Windows a chance to shine. And so I'm I'm actually kind of excited about the future of Windows RT for that alone. Kill the desktop. The desktop does not belong in Windows RT. Didn't in the first uh, uh, on the first day, and it doesn't today. Um, I, I'm very, very fascinated. I, I uh, and, and, and how that's going to evolve. Just get rid of the desktop for that experience. I'm not saying get rid of the desktop for Windows because there's a place for the desktop. Shouldn't uh, shouldn't get into it right now because I'll be here for another half hour. Uh, there are a few a few other articles that I guess I I, 
I could cover today, uh, but I, 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 I gotta, I'll, I'll save one for tomorrow. Um, and I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Uh, I've talked about some of these issues issues before, but they keep coming up over and over and over again. And it, more than anything, I, sometimes I like covering these stories because they usually reinforce things that I was saying six months uh, six months ago, or a year ago, or two years ago. And then I go. Everyone conveniently forgets. You know, I become the scapegoat for everything, but I. I'm saying this is what they should have done in the first place. Why you get mad at me? I don't work at these places. Um, if I did mention anything today, it was that the, the separate video I did yesterday, how did you get to where you are today? I, I, I did that one, and it, it worked out well. I really enjoyed doing that. It wasn't very tech-heavy. wasn't necessarily geek-heavy, but uh, I enjoyed doing that video. And so if you have time to uh, watch that video, I'll be sure to relink it in this uh, video's description. Thanks again. If you like today's effort, thanks for the likes, uh, the shares, the subscribes, the uh, the, the, the views, uh, the being you, uh, being happy. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Uh, pregnancy update, Diana's not uh, given birth yet. She's still pregnant. Uh, we're still producing vlogs, having a lot of fun. Um, and, and what else? Did I, did I need to say anything else? I think, I think I'm pretty good today. Did I cover everything I need to get? Sounds like it to me. Dad, Dad's good to go. Did you learn anything? Yeah, I do. I always do. Dad always learns something. So if Dad learns something, what's your excuse? Everyone should have learned something today. If not, that's you got That's the best thing about being you know online. You could learn something new every day. It's not going to hurt you, unless what you learn is you know how to hurt yourself. And don't do that. Don't hurt yourself. That's I, I wouldn't like that. Don't hurt other people either. There's your PSA. Do not hurt other people. Your happiness cannot come at the cost of other people's happiness. This is Father Chris. Sorry, soon to be Father Chris. Sound like Father Time when I say that. Father, I don't like that. Dad, I don't know if I like Dad. I don't. Know, I don't like. I don't like pops. I don't like Dad. I don't like Father. What else do I have? Daddy? No, I don't like that. I, what do I like? Papa? Papa? No, I don't like that one either. Anakin? No, I that that was ruined by the prequels. Vader. Uh, my child will call me Vader. Child's gonna call me what the child decides to call me. Uh, at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. We'll see you later.